All right, so uh, WordPress and your freelance course. This is somebody who wants to transition out of his job. He wants to get into freelancing, and he had a few questions in regards to that. So I'm going to skim through the email, answer his questions. He sent me this uh, a couple months back. I get a lot of communication, so it takes me time to get to things. Now, all right. Uh, hi, Steph. I'm going to be purchasing your freelance course pretty soon. Thank you. Um, and I'm wondering a couple things. Right now... I am still pretty novice with the actual languages like JS and PHP, although I've done a bit with your foundation courses and I'm pretty good right now with HTML and CSS. So my problem is that I work in, I won't say what he does, he's tired of his job, he makes good money, uh, but he, he wants to drop down to part-time so he can get into freelancing. Uh, so he he's smart, he doesn't want to make a bad move. One of the bad moves that people can make, if you're, you have a job that pays your bills and you want to start a business, you want to get into freelance or something, the worst thing you can do is quit your job outright and jump into the new business because there's going to be a startup phase, if you will, a ramp up phase with your business. No matter what type of business, unless you're lucky, there's going to be a, a ramp up phase. It's going to take time before the new business gets up and running. So it's good to keep your foot in that job so you got money still coming in, so you're not choking, desperate for contracts. Now, what I would say, if possible, instead of going part-time with your current job, what I would do is I would uh, just work, you know, an hour every day, maybe four, a few hours on the weekends, to get your new business up and running while staying full-time with the current job. Why? Because there's always going to be inertia period. Because what you need to do, we're going to get into the details in terms of skills. Besides skills, and uh, you're going to need to get a website up, which you can do in the evenings, you can do on the weekends. You're going to need to get a website up. You're going to make sure you're going to have to bone up on a few skill sets here and there. And then you're going to have to start... Uh, reaching out to people you could do this uh on you know on weekends you could uh, reach out to small business owners you may know uh get your site up make sure it looks amazing maybe do some google ads um uh, you can you know in the evening after work maybe some take some afternoons off here and there to meet with new prospective clients the first client is always the hardest to get. Then it just gets easier and easier and easier. But there's that inertia period you're gonna to have to contend with. So I'm not sure in the first few months at least that going part-time with your current job is is gonna speed up the process too much. You could, but until you get your site up and running and you've done you you got that first contract, I think you could probably do this on the week on the weekends and you know work a little bit every evening or every other evening after work. Our sponsor, Buddy, is a CI CD automation tool. It's very intuitive, simple to use. You can set up everything with a GUI. They have over 100 predefined actions, integrations to use. I welcome tools like Buddy because though DevOps is essential today, it can get a little bit too complex and silly to set up and run slowing down the development process, tools like Buddy can help solve that problem. Anyway, so he continues to say he really wants to leave the job really bad. That I can understand. So let me uh, continue. Now, the problem is that right now I already know HTML and CSS, and I don't know if that will be, uh, if that will do enough for freelancing. Typically, not terribly, but as I've spoken about in other videos, with HTML and CSS knowledge, where you understand that, and I assume you do, you understand the basics of hosting and domain names, all this kind of stuff, you could become a consultant who helps with their WordPress installations, uh, helps with their web builders, whether it be uh, Wix or whatever, there's so many out there. You'd be surprised how many businesses are going to try, they, they want to maybe spend 500 bucks or 400 bucks, and they'll use a web builder, but they don't know what to do with that. They don't know about domain names. They don't know any about, uh, about all these things, about what's a good domain name. And even if you use a web builder, you know, anybody will tell you, you know, you've done web. You know, just because you use a web builder doesn't mean you're going to be able to structure your site so it makes sense for people, right? 
So that's a way you can get into that. If you jump into, so you could become not only just a, a coder with, you know, just front end basic coding skills, HTML, CSS3, HTML5, CSS3. You could become somebody who helps people configure their Wix or their Squarespace or their WordPress, et cetera, et cetera. These are a low rent gigs, but it's a, it's a way to get going, a way to get into the game. I can make landing pages and HTML emails. I know Grid and Flexbox, but I am not really a designer. That's okay. You can use templates, follow basic design principles. You know, that's a course I should do. I should do a basics design course, basic design principles that you can follow. So even if you don't have a designer skill set, following these basic principles will allow you to work with templates and and not mess them up, right? You don't want to buy a template or get a free template that looks good, and then because you don't understand design principles, you mess them up when you're trying to modify them. Once you get the template, you stick to the template, you stick to the basic design principles, like a handful, like 10. Your pages look amazing. Yeah, so templates is the answer for that. Or once you get established, you could partner with a proper designer. He continues, I can make any or most designs if I see them, but I have a problem coming up with my own. There you go, templates. So I think that if I find a client and they want to just make something from scratch, I might have a problem. No, because you interview the clients, you talk to them and say, okay, what kind of style do you like? You know, and show them some sites. Show them some sites, maybe show them some templates. You know, that's part of the job, right? So, and you work from there. Plus, I am still learning about how to actually connect things if I make an actual website like form shopping hearts email. Yeah, uh, do the JavaScript and the PHP, especially the PHP course, that is going to help you in a big way. One of, one of the things that I, I should emphasize more my foundation training. My foundation training, I teach HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, and I teach PHP and SQL, and I also have Python. Now, I use, in many of these cases, I use the languages as a vehicle to teach broader concepts, like connecting things together, as you would say. So in the HTML, you remember you've done it, I taught about the request response cycle, servers versus clients, how pages are processed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I go much deeper in my JavaScript course and I go much deeper in my PHP course. So you're gonna understand all this. When you come out, as you may have seen people comment under the YouTube videos, when you've done my full stack course, just the foundation courses really, that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, SQL databases, you come out of there and you basically have a very good understanding of how the whole process works. So for you to learn this, that, or the other thing will be pretty trivial, but most importantly, you understand the big picture besides the minutia of the code. You understand what it is to implement a shopping cart. You understand what it is to implement a CMS. You understand um, form processing, all this kind of stuff. This is the basics of all modern web apps. It covers 99% of it. And then from there, you're free to go in any direction. So yeah. What you need to do is, since you got the foundation towards done HTML, CSS, you're very comfortable with any design, as you said. And that's the whole point of those two courses. Now get into the JavaScript, PHP, get into those two, and then all of a sudden the connecting that you talked about becomes very accessible. So as questions. Number one, will learning WordPress get me started on the freelance game a lot sooner? Yes. And can I make pretty good money simply freelancing from WordPress? Very good money once you get everything going because WordPress is like uh, plumbing. What do I mean by that? Plumbing is considered a dirty job and it has a certain level of complexity. So plumbers make, I was gonna use a, a nasty word because it's a good um, play in words. They make a lot of money. Plumbers make a lot of money. WordPress people can make a lot of money because developers typically don't want to touch WordPress. Designers don't want to touch WordPress. Meanwhile, WordPress powers so many websites, business websites, small business websites out there. It's not, it's not funny. I talk about it for one of my friends. It's like he has this love-hate. He's, he's a business owner. He doesn't really know anything about code. and His business has nothing to do with code, but his sites are on WordPress. It's a love-hate because WordPress has a lot of uh, functionality that makes things work well, but it's also a pain in, in the uh, butt, in the derriere, as they say in French, 
uh, to update and maintain sometimes. So he pays tens of thousands of dollars to get his WordPress sites uh, kept up to date. So he says, I guess simply put, what is the programming knowledge that is going to make me into freelance soonest? Is going to take me into freelancing sooner? Um, Webstack, PHP, so many small businesses leverage uh, content management systems like WordPress, Drumo, and Drupla, uh, or uh, shopping cart based things. PHP is the key, although you could do it in other languages as well. But Again, you got my full stack course. Just do the PHP. Do the JavaScript, PHP, SQL. All of a sudden, it's going to open up everything. So if you run into a client who's doing Ruby, you can tell him, get the hell off of Ruby. I'm just kidding about that. No, but if you, you run into a client who's got a Ruby-based thing, for you to learn Ruby, Rails won't be that difficult because you have that background. I did a Ruby joke for you guys. See, I'm thinking about you guys. All right, number two. Does your WordPress project course teach most of what I need in creating websites? doing other things with WordPress. The WordPress the WordPress project course teaches you theme building, the whole theme structure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, that's what it does. I used to have a WordPress course. I took it off because it got too old. But uh, I might, I think I should throw off a basic install and configure and your walk around WordPress course. I think I'll do that something this year with the latest version of WordPress. I was waiting for the new uh, version of WordPress to come out because they have a whole, a whole new editor. So I was waiting for that. I think that's out now. Again, finish the full stack, you know, with the languages because there's much more around the languages than just the languages. As you know, if, since you've done the HTML5 and CSS3, jump in, do the uh, WordPress theme course. It's it. You should be good to go. Again, as I've said many times, you want to have a really nice website up and running so that people can see your work. People are going to judge you, especially business owners and suits, people who are not coders. The only way they're going to be able to judge your skills is based on whether or not your site looks good and you show up not smelling in the meetings, dress well, cut your fingernails, take a bath. I am still learning and plan on continuing even while freelancing. This is normal. My goal is to learn JS and PHP really well. Yep. Then we will see where it takes me. It will take you far. But for now, I really want to start grinding it out in freelance and making some money to get out of my job. Really sorry for the long email. I know you're busy. Apologize. Uh, yeah, well, no worries. You know, you sent me this email a couple months back. That's why I waited a long time. It was a long email. Short email. One or two sentences in a paragraph, a couple short bullet points will get you answers much quicker and it will get you business much quicker. Being terse, to the point, simple, in code writing, in design, and in communications is huge. Hope that helps. Thank you.